Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ryan Retro channel. In today's video, I'm going to be introducing you to GameHub Lite, a new version of GameHub made by a member of the community who's taken the original GameHub and tried to take out all of the things that seem a little bit sketchy or just unnecessary about the original app. For anyone who doesn't know, GameHub is an app made by GameSir, famous for making great controllers, but there's been quite a bit of controversy around it, mostly around all of the permissions they ask you for. If you want to play computer games in GameHub, it will ask you for your exact location, it will ask you to enable things like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth at all times. There are just so many things that seem a little bit suspicious about it, but it is a fantastic Windows emulator. So GameHub Lite aims to take all of the great things about GameHub and take all of those sketchy things out. I believe it's mostly open source. I will put a link in the description below for you to check it out for yourself. It's all on GitHub, you can look through it yourself and people more knowledgeable than me can let me know in the comments as well. But of course, always have your due diligence about any of these kind of applications. And if you do install GameHub Lite, you might notice a certain Ryan Retro content in there. But I'm not affiliated or endorsed by this product in any way. I've just been in contact with the developers, letting them know some things that are not working very well. And they asked me if I wanted to be included in this game list. So I said, yeah, why not? So in today's video, we're going to install GameHub Lite as well as the original GameHub on two identical devices. We're going to run through them side by side, compare what permissions they ask for, and also compare the performance on each. So for this video, we'll be using the Retroid Pocket Flip 2 and the Retroid Pocket 5. These two devices have the exact same specifications inside and the same screen. They are identical except for the external form factor. So on the Retroid Pocket Flip 2 first, we're going to install the regular version of GameHub, which we can do by going to this website that I'll link in the description below. And we just need to hit this Android download button. Once it finishes downloading, we can open the APK file and we can install GameHub. That one is installed, so now let's install GameHub Lite by going to the GitHub link, which I will also put in the description of this video. Here you can read all about how it was made, and if you come to releases over here, this is where we can download the application. You're going to see a few different APK files to choose from. We have the normal version, GameHub Lite Fixed Normal. We also have the GameHub Lite Normal Old Don't Use, so we're not going to use that one. And then we also have two other versions, GameHub and Tutu and GameHub Lite PUBG. So for anybody who doesn't know, if you rename one of the applications on your phone or Android device to a certain few names like and Tutu or PUBG, it can kind of trick your phone into using the full performance of the phone. I'm not exactly sure how this works, but some of these applications like the Antutu benchmark app and PUBG push your device's performance to its maximum. So by renaming your application to one of those, your phone or Android handheld will think it's one of those powerful apps and it will push your device harder to run them at their maximum capacity. So by installing either GameHub and Tutu or GameHub Lite PUBG, which as far as I'm aware are the exact same thing, it's going to trick your device into thinking it's one of those other applications and it's going to push the device harder. Now be aware if you have a device that does not have an internal fan, it might cause it to get quite hot. So if you're using a phone and no external cooling, I would recommend using the normal application. But if you're using a handheld like me that has built-in cooling, then you can go ahead and pick either the Antutu or PUBG APK, which should basically be the same thing. So for this test, I would just randomly pick the PUBG variant and open it. I will install GameHub PUBG, and now it's ready to open. So just once again for clarity, this is nothing to do with PUBG Battlegrounds. It's just named like that so that your device will push its performance to the maximum. So this is quite difficult to show both at once because of this light above my head, but with both devices ready to open now, we're going to run through both and see how they're different. Both will ask you to agree to the user agreement and privacy policy, so we'll do that. We have this introduction video on the GameHub Lite variant. This used to be in the main GameHub app, but was removed after some time. Let's just back out of that, and we'll be taken to the main home screen. So GameHub Lite is now ready to go. On the original GameHub, the one made by GameSir, you can see it's asking us to sign in. So already it wants some of our information. It either wants your Apple ID, your Google ID, or your email address. If you choose Apple ID, 
you're going to have to give them your Apple ID and password, which of course could be sketchy. If you choose Google ID, you're also going to have to sign in with your Google account, which has your password in it as well. So I would recommend choosing email. This way you only give them your email address. They send you a verification pin code, which you enter here, and then you're signed in. So I'm going to give them only my email address. They've sent me a verification code to sign into the account. And now I've signed in and it asks me for message notifications. So this is yet another permission it wants from me. It wants to send me notifications. So I will allow that. So now after giving them my email address and allowing them to notify me, I am logged into the app. And you will see it's a little bit different. There are more features in the original app. But the main thing we want to do is we want to add our own games and we want to sign into Steam. Those are both present in GameHub Lite. So if I come to the My tab over here, you're going to see some of those same features, the PC emulator and the Steam login. We don't have everything in GameHub Lite right now, but we do have what I think are the most important features. So let's try to sign into Steam now and get some of our Steam games downloaded and playing and see how they compare. So we'll come to the Steam tab on both of them, and it's going to be mostly the same. You need to sign into Steam, so you have the choice of giving your username and password or signing a QR code and using a one-time token. So I always recommend using the QR code login. So the only thing they're getting from you is a one-time use code which expires after you use it. In my opinion, that's much better than typing your username and password into this where it could possibly be read by somebody. I just scanned the QR code with my phone to sign into both of these and you're going to see basically the exact same thing now. You can scroll through your games and you can install them. So I'm going to install Tomb Raider on both of these as it has a really good built-in benchmark so we can compare the frame rate. Here on GameHub Lite, we click Get Game, Install, and it's going to prepare my download now. Here on the regular GameHub, we click Get Game, Install. So the game is now downloading on both of the devices. Tomb Raider has now finished installing on both versions of GameHub. So let's begin with the original GameHub. Let's press play now and see what permissions it wants. So it wants to enable Bluetooth. It says that the controller cannot connect properly if Bluetooth is not enabled. And we also need to authorize location information and discover nearby devices. Uh, it doesn't give us any reason whatsoever why we need to do this. We just need to turn on location while using the app so that this app can track where we are for no apparent reason whatsoever. So do you want to allow GameHub to find, connect to, and determine the relative position of nearby devices? Allow. And then when we do that, we can then launch into the game. Let's take a look at GameHub Lite and launch the same game. And it doesn't ask us for any permissions whatsoever. Both are downloading the necessary firmware and other drivers and things that we need to run the game. So let's see if they both launch automatically. Both devices are now into the game. The original Game Hub launched first time. The Game Hub Lite version did crash midway through launching, but I just closed the app, opened it again, and then it loaded completely fine in just a few seconds. So they are both loaded completely fine now. Let's start the benchmark in Tomb Raider and let's see how the results go. There were some reports, including by myself, that GameHub Lite was doing a little bit worse than original GameHub when it came to performance. But those bugs seem to have been ironed out now by the developers. So let's see if we do get the same result as we should, as these devices are identical. So let's begin the Tomb Raider benchmark. So looking at the HUD at the bottom of the screen, it seems that GameHub Lite is pulling slightly more watts from the device, but the regular GameHub is getting slightly higher frames. It could be possible that these are just not really reporting accurately. And in my conversations with the developers of the app, they said that they basically just pulled things out of the original game hub. They didn't really add their own things in, so it should be identical. If we look at the results here, we have an average FPS of 54 frames per second on the original game hub and 51 frames per second on game hub light. So there is a slight performance advantage with the original game hub, but very negligible in this case. So if you do want to get the absolute best performance, it might be worth sticking with GameHub for now. But I'll put up on the screen now the differences in permissions between the two, which of your data you have to hand over if you want to use these apps. Now, of course, permissions are not the only thing that can be sketchy about an application. There's a lot more that can go on behind the scenes, and I'm by no means an expert of this whatsoever. I'm also not saying you should absolutely use GameHub Lite over GameHub, or that you should disregard GameHub Lite. I'm not saying anything one way or the other. I just want to let you guys know about this 
introduce it to you and let you make your own informed decisions. For me personally, I'm going to carry on with Game Hub Lite because I don't like giving all my permissions, especially my location, to an app that just seriously doesn't need it. Whether there's actually anything sketchy going on whatsoever, I have no idea. And it's not like my location is so important, like I'm the king of the world, but with apps like WinLater, Game Native, and even Game Hub Lite not requiring any of those permissions, it does make me question why I would give any of the information to Game Hub. So I just wanted to put that information out there today and start a discussion on this. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments section. Once again, I'm by no means telling you to go out and do anything. I just want to present the information to you and I hope this can be useful and helpful. I'll have another video coming tomorrow about Game Hub and Game Hub Lite and how to optimize performance to get better frame rate. I went from 30 frames per second to 110 frames per second in one of the games, thanks to those optimizations. So I'm excited to share that with you tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please give me a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm really hoping to hit 30,000 soon, and I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye.